Welcome to the First Year Physics Laboratory Orientation. In this orientation, I'm going to go over the things that you need to bring to your lab class, where you can find information on Moodle about the lab, and in particular the schedule, what to do if you miss a lab, and how we're going to grade you in the labs, including the working in groups that you're going to do. Finally, there'll be information about another orientation that you need to do regarding lab safety. Things that you need to bring to lab include your lab manual, which has the instructions for the experiments that you're going to do. You can buy this lab manual from the bookstore. If you're in the general physics course, you should buy the one with the blue cover. And if you're in the physics for life sciences, you will buy the one in the green cover. Please put your name on your manual so that we can tell that it's yours if you leave it behind. You also need some sort of device for calculating. So this could be a scientific calculator or an app on your smartphone. And you need some sort of writing utensil, pen or pencil, is, are both accepted, but we recommend that you use something erasable. You're also going to occasionally use computers in the lab uh, to collect or analyze data. The computers should be logged in for you, so if you see a blue screen like in the left-hand image, um, you should ask your instructor to log in the computer so uh, that you see something like the desktop shown on the right that has the panther mascot in the background. On your Moodle course page, there is a section with laboratory information. It's called Lab Experiments, Information, Lab Quizzes, and Data Sheets. There you'll find a link to the lab schedule that will tell you what experiment you're doing on different days. And there's also a form to apply for a lab exemption if you have completed the course before and have already completed the labs. You will also find placeholder links for where your grades for data sheets will go and uh, links to quizzes that you will have to do after you complete a lab. If you miss a lab due to something unavoidable, like an illness or an accident, then you need to contact your instructor within one week of the missed lab to let them know and to book a makeup lab. We may require documentation about why you missed the lab. If you know in advance that you have a conflict with one of your scheduled labs, like a medical appointment or a travel, it might be possible to switch sections for one week, but you have to contact your instructor in advance, not after you miss the lab. Your instructor con uh, contact information is available in your lab manual. It's also shown here on the screen with the emails for Megan Glover, Lisa Steele, and their shared office phone number. If the university is closed when you have a lab scheduled, this occurs more often in the winter with stormy weather, you will be notified by a Moodle News post uh, within two days about what we're going to do to change the lab schedule. This means that you don't have to email your instructor to ask when your lab is going to be rescheduled to. We will let you know. So how we grade you in the lab is in two parts. Data sheets, which are worth uh, 24 marks, and pre or post lab quizzes, which are worth six marks. And together that means each lab experiment is worth 30 marks. So the data sheets are uh, sheets that you complete in the lab with the measurements that you make and the calculations you do. You're going to be working in groups of three, but every student is going to complete their own data sheet. And these will be due at the end of your lab time. They'll be submitted together as a group, but only the top sheet is going to be graded. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So this means that usually everyone in the lab group shares the same grade for the data sheet. Now, for the pre- or post-lab quizzes, you'll be working alone on these. Typically, they are post-lab quizzes uh, done on Moodle, where there's three to four multiple choice or true-false questions. But they're open books, so you can use your lab manual to refer to them, or refer to during the quiz. Um, typically, they're due several days after your lab. You can check Moodle for the specific dates. Sometimes, though, they will be a pre-lab activity that'll be due at the start of your lab, and your instructor will inform you in advance when that's the case. As I mentioned, you'll be working in groups. We will split you randomly into groups of three each lab, and we do this by having you draw numbers from a deck of cards. So when you come to lab in the central island, there will be a deck of cards. Here we have shown someone getting the number five, so that means you would look for the table that also has the number five on it, and that'll be your workstation for the day. It's uh, very useful if you can place your card at the end of your table so that the instructor can collect it uh, easily when they, uh, everyone has arrived. And when you arrive at your workstation, there will be a pile of data sheets. So you're going to take one and fill out the top. And this is an illustration of the top down here at the bottom of the screen with your own name. You're going to circle the, uh, the day that your lab section is occurring on and the time that your lab starts at. And you're going to fill out your partner's names once they arrive. 
when you and your group have finished working on the lab experiment, uh, you're going to decide together whose data sheet is going to go on the top because you're going to staple them all together to submit them. We're going to be grading the top sheet, as I mentioned. So you want to choose the data sheet that you think is the best in terms of how it's been completed. So the calculations are shown properly. All the data has been recorded correctly. The units are where they're needed. You're not picking the one with the best handwriting because we're grading content, not how it looks. So you'll staple them together and you'll put them in the data sheet drop off box that is uh, shown in the picture here. Um, although we're only grading the top data sheet, we can deduct marks on the bottom data sheets for things like um, questions that have been left blank. There's more information in your lab manual about our grading procedure, so please review that and ask your lab instructor at any time throughout the semester if you have any questions about grading. So some specific examples of things we're looking for in your data sheets uh, include the data that you've uh, taken during the lab. So the, here we're looking for that you've correctly recorded the measurements you made and that you were using the equipment as instructed. So in the image uh, shown here, there's a student recorded voltage measurements, but many of these were supposed to be negative measurements and they left off the negative sign, so we deduct some marks for that. We do not penalize you for equipment that is not functioning properly, so if you have some problem with your equipment during the lab, talk to your instructor about it and they may initial the lab uh, next to it, your data to sh show that they know that your equipment wasn't functioning and it's not your fault that your measurements weren't very good. Another thing that we're looking for is that you do correct calculations, and this means showing the equation in symbols that you use, then the numbers that you've inputted to your calculation, and finally your final value with units if necessary. So symbols that we use to indicate that your calculation uh, had mistakes in it would be if you left out the equation, we would use EQN to, uh, as we've done here for this student who left out the equation in symbols, or you might see calc if you made a, a calculation error. We do want units in your final answer. So in a calculation like this here, the units should have been grams per centimeter cube. So units with a question mark has been written in there to indicate there was a problem. We'll be looking for uh, appropriate significant figures used in your final answers, but also during intermediate calculations. So when you're using a number like this 2.7 here in another calculation, it shouldn't be rounded off to very few digits. You should probably keep five to six significant figures in your intermediate calculations. Your calculator may give more digits than that, but you don't have to write down absolutely every one of them. Um, if there you'd have inappropriate significant figures in a calculation, then calc SF would be the symbol you use for that. If in a final answer you have inappropriate significant figures, like here with this uncertainty that should have been rounded to one significant figure but has left a two, then we will use SF as the symbol. If you don't know how to do all this rounding at the moment, that's okay. We're going to teach you in the first few labs how to uh, do the uh, rounding that we want to see and your calculations. Finally, after you have finished this orientation, there is a lab safety orientation that you need to go through. So there's a video on that and then a short quiz for you to complete. We need you to complete this quiz before you come to your second week of labs and we'll be checking that you have completed it before we let you into the lab room. Once you have your lab manual, inside the front cover is the laboratory safety rules uh, that you can refer to at any time.